Good morning. It's great to be with you on this Friday morning. The Word of God speaks about trouble. And it tells us not to let our hearts or emotions be troubled. Well, we're going to deal with that subject. And right now, I want to ask God to bless our study today. Precious Heavenly Father, how I thank you for the word of the living God. I thank you for those that listen to the word of God from this source, knowing that I'm only giving them what God says in his holy and rich word. We ask you to bless each one, Lord, whether they're alone in a place, whether they're sick, whether they're just using this as their devotional life. Father, may your name be glorified and may they increase in their knowledge of you and their knowledge of your love for them. In the name of Jesus Christ and for the glory of God, I pray. Amen. In John's Gospel, the 14th chapter, the chapter begins with these words, Let not your heart be troubled. Do you realize that God knows that you have many times a troubled heart? We all have a troubled heart. And our heart is troubled because we forget that God is watching over us that God cares for us, that God himself loves us with an infinite, eternal love. So when our heart is troubled, it concerns him. He cares about troubled hearts. Well, what does he say in this portion of the scripture, knowing that you have a troubled heart? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. You believe also in me. Jesus talking. If you believe in God the Father, believe in what God the Son says. He is trying to minister life to you and truth to you. He is trying to shepherd you as a good shepherd, as John also records. Don't let your heart be troubled. Start believing in the words of Jesus Christ. That's what he's saying. I am God's son. You believe in God, the Father. And that's great. But God loves you so much, he sent his only unique son. And Jesus says, I'm that son. Believe in what I say to you, because they're the same words the Father is saying to you. Jesus goes on to talk about heaven. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. The King James puts mansions. But there are many dwelling places. When your life is over on earth, if you've received Christ as your Savior while you're on this earth, then you go to one of those dwelling places. And God loves you so much, he's been preparing for more than 2,000 years, biblically speaking, God loves you. And he's got a place, a dwelling place, already prepared for you. So to be absent from the body, you'll be present with the Lord. And you'll have a beautiful dwelling place. Don't be worried about everything. If God loves you so much, he's preparing a home for you before you get there, then God cares for you right now in your situation and in your circumstance. In my father's house, it's his father. 
his father is God the Father on many dwelling places. It goes on to say, if it were not so, I'm not going to lie to you, Jesus says. If it wasn't so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Now, Jesus never told a lie. If he had told a lie, it would have been sin. And he never sinned. So everything that Jesus says, I can trust in. I don't have to debate it. I don't have to try to figure out, is it true or isn't it true? It's always true. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you following the crucifixion and the resurrection. And if I go and prepare a place for you, and I'm going to do that, he says, trust my words. Then, then, my friends, I will come for you. He goes on to say that in verse 3. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you'll be also. Where's Jesus going? To heaven? Where am I eventually going? To heaven? Why? Because Jesus paid for my sins. He paid for your sins. And I received that payment, and I hope you have. And now I'm assured a place, a dwelling place, in heaven. What a beautiful, beautiful truth that is. Why then should you be troubled about anything? If God thinks so highly of you that he's gone to prepare a place for you, and he's coming back for you one day, or you're going to be with him before that day, perhaps, then he must love you with an infinite, eternal love. The word of God goes on to say this, and whether I go, you know, you should know, and the way you should know. But Thomas, not Thomas Iscariot, said unto him, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? How long had Jesus been with them? For quite a while. He had no doubt taught them things that they just dismiss. They forgot. It's a lot like my messages. I have the, a sheet they fill out so they can remember the points of the service and the points of the message. But if I didn't do that, they'd easily forget. They enjoy the message. They receive the message when I'm preaching it. But it's so easy for us humans to forget what we just heard. Jesus had taught them over and over and over. And some of you have been taught in the church over and over and over, and yet you don't remember it when the crisis comes. You don't remember it when the problem comes. Jesus had given them the way and taught them how they would be able to go there. But they were so earthly-minded at that point that they didn't even think, what's going to happen when we die? They knew the Old Testament, but they didn't listen to what Jesus was saying. And so Jesus, he's confused. I know he's God, but in his flesh, he's confused. Why don't they know? They should know. I'll teach him again. The Word of God goes on to say in verse 6, a very famous verse that Jesus gave, and one that you and I must listen to over and over. He said unto him, I am the way to heaven. 
I am the way to heaven. Have I not taught you this? Do you not know me? Don't you know me? And he said, I am the truth of how to get there. And I am the life when you get there. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You ought to have known. I've been with you and I've taught you. You've heard me preaching to others. You ought to have known that I, the Son of God, would be the only way to get to heaven. But they didn't. They didn't hear because it wasn't what they were thinking of at that moment. They were thinking of taking over Rome and becoming a nation themselves, conquering Rome. Jesus was the mighty conqueror. Not yet, friends. Not yet. He was the suffering Savior now. And here they are. Here they are, and they don't know the way to heaven. They don't know how to get there, the truth about how to get there. And they do not know about the eternal life that we have because of Jesus. Do you know it? Do you know it? Is it a reality to you, my friends? Jesus is the way to heaven. You can't get there by being good, although it's commendable to be good. You can't get there, my friends, by doing all kinds of deeds that are righteous deeds in the church, although that's good to do. You cannot get there by being a Catholic, a Protestant. You can't get there just by being that. You must be born from above. You must have this new birth. You must come to the point where you say, Jesus, I accept your offer of salvation. Forgive me for my sins. Come into my life and save me by your grace. I'm the way to heaven. And I am the truth of how you get there. And I have taught you that this world is not it all. There is another kingdom, the kingdom of my Father. It's the kingdom of God, and it is a place where every person that receives me as their Lord and Savior lives eternally. Don't you know the way? Don't you now understand the truth of how to get there? And don't you, don't you please know the eternal existence that God has provided for those who have loved him and received him as their Savior? The word of God goes on to say this. If I had, if you had known, you should have known my father. If you have known me, you should have known my Father, and from henceforth you know him and have seen him. And they think to themselves, when have we seen the Father? Listen, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it's enough. Jesus looks at him. Oh, you have so little understanding, Philip. But Philip wasn't the only one. He voiced what the others no doubt had been talking about. Show us God the Father. And then we will believe in you. Because he sent you. We believe that. And Jesus said unto him, have I not been with you so a long time and you have not known me, Philip? 
Well, show us the Father. I, I'm not asking you about who you are. I'm asking you about the Father. He, Jesus speaking, that had seen me, Philip, you've seen me, have seen the Father. What? You mean you and the Father are one? Yes, Philip, that's what Jesus said. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak of, not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, I have spoken his words and do his works. Do you understand it? Do you yet understand it, Philip? And Philip probably had a glimpse. But it wasn't completely understood by Philip. Jesus is the expressed image of the Father. When you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. But you've seen the Father veiled in human flesh. But the same way you look at a person and you say, I see you, is what Jesus is saying. You see me, but you don't know me. You see me, but you don't know me. You need to start knowing me, Philip. He said this, and he said it so beautifully. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and else believe me for my work's sake. If you won't believe me because I tell you this, then at least notice the miracles, and it must be the Father's work. Truly, truly, verse 12, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the Son of God, the works that I do shall he also do, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And he's speaking of the Holy Spirit coming into the disciples, into all that receive Christ as their Savior, and giving them a capacity to do greater works than he was able to do on this earth. Because of technology, well, I can reach more people than Jesus ever reached in his lifetime with the gospel. But that's because of technology and the Holy Spirit giving that technology to us. The Word of God says, again Jesus speaking, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, the name of Jesus Christ, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. My friends, you can ask out of the will of God and God will not answer you yes. But if you always ask in the will of God and the will of God's written in the Bible, it is the will of God, then God says, I will do what you ask, that my Father may receive the credit. In verse 14, if you shall ask anything in my name, according to the word of God and the will of God, I will do it. If you love me, keep my words, keep my words. Friends, Jesus has said in this Bible study, from his holy word, I'm preparing a place for you. There is a place prepared for you in heaven if you receive Christ as your Savior. It, God is saying to us, listen, I'm going to tell you the way to heaven. Are you listening yet? Are you really listening? Do you think it's just doing good things? 
Do you think it's being a good person? Do you think that it's going to a certain church? I tell you, no, it isn't. It's because you've been born again, born from above, born into the family of God by receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord, Lord, that means you do what he tells you to do. And Savior, that means you are a sinner and you need saving. And God says, I'm the way to heaven. I'm the truth of how to get there. And I'm the eternal life, I promise you. If you make that decision, you will have eternal life. If you don't, you will exist, but not have life. You will have a living death. Have you heard my word? Has the word of God penetrated your soul? And have you received Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you have, it's time to rejoice. Rejoice because of the truth. And the truth sets us all free from condemnation, free from worry, free from doubt. God bless you on this Friday. Tomorrow I'll try to get on the air to let you know what I'm preaching on Sunday. And then I hope you listen to those messages either in person or you listen to them by YouTube or Facebook. And then we'll give you Journey into Faith live on Monday on this particular site. And then our Bible studies start again on Tuesday, God willing. May your whole life be bound around knowing the truth and the life because you know the way to heaven and you've taken it. Have a great, great Friday.